please tell your neighbors we are back and uh, we are better and bigger and uh, we must tell you that the station impact africa television is uh, growing getting better bigger uh, in order towards to supply if you are anywhere right now in nigeria uh, tell your friends tell your neighbors that uh, the southwest talking about western nigeria is getting geared up for a new beginning and i must tell you my guest once again is the head of the dawn team they call them uh development agency of western nigeria uh is the dg a mebu young man uh full of a brain and also uh, is the head of the think tank talking about uh, the dawn commission here in uh, ibado they are st situated at uh, the first skyscraper in western nigeria even even nigeria i must tell you uh coco house they call the place his name is uh, Sheye Oyeleye. welcome sir good afternoon viewers a pleasure being here uh the dawn you remember in those days when you say don that means d-o-n not <laughs> like Absolutely. The, the that don. means the, the, the big guy mm -hmm. uh, are you the big guy in the southwest no um, the, um there's no big guy. The, the commission itself is, as you rightly said, development agenda for Western mm -hmm. Nigeria. The commission itself is um, an intellectual think tank for development, uh, primarily in Western Nigeria mm -hmm. within the Nigerian space. Okay. And um, our job is purely to think out ideas, get policies together, and um, get our six states which you've mentioned, yeah. to implement work or together. To, to work together. I mean, the idea itself, as you rightly know, um, when it was floated a few years ago, was to, the idea was for the six states that you mentioned that yeah. form today's Western Nigeria or, or Southwest Nigeria, as they normally say, which is um, a, a latter-day this coinage <laughs> or designation it's still western nigeria the idea is that um, the commission will serve as the vehicle for the six states to collaborate um so yes we the idea is to integrate and work together but we normally say that um you must cooperate and collaborate okay. before you can then talk of um, integration together. so uh, and by the grace of god the last nine years uh, a lot has been achieved by the six states in collaborating and uh, um, ensuring that they think together, they reason together. Um, it's um, it's easy to say that, oh, why must six states work together? Why? <laughs> but, but, but there used to be one entity. Absolutely. You know, it used to be a single entity, entity or in those days. Um, remember, as you said in your intro, that um, it, the old western region, which was governed by the our law Akinsola government in in the 50s and uh, early 60s was governed right right from here in ibadan yeah. and um initially it was the present day eight states because it used to include edo and delta, and delta yeah. before we then had the midwest states and um, creation governance was fantastic in those days i mean today we have eight governors then we only had a single person <laughs> sitting at Okiadu in his house or latterly when uh, Chief Akitola in his house in uh, um, Federal Court. Exactly, Yagoku governed. And yes, so the idea of Don itself was not to reenact the past, but try and create a semblance that you have six states that are contiguous, six states that speak the same, same language, language, the same culture, and the world has gradually moved away from working in silos. So there was, we felt that there will be more, there will be power, greater synergy when you have six states thinking together. So that was what brought the, the idea language. of Dawn. That was what brought the idea of Dawn itself. Originally. Now let's look at it. You have about five areas of uh, uh, intervention. I mm. say intervention. Mm. Uh, the economic development. Yeah. We have the social and human development. Yeah. We have infrastructural development. Yeah. We have a building inclusive institution yeah. and homeland affairs. affairs. Uh, for the first time in this uh, uh, coinage called Nigeria, 
the Southwest is, seems to be threatened in terms of security. Mm. If you look at the security situation and what uh, the vibes we are hearing from different corners, mm. saying that uh, people are planning to, you know, make an incursion into the Southwest. Don, what are you doing? Um, you remember that um, in 2019, the states came together when the issue of um, kidnapping, insecurity was at its highest then. The states came together and said, as particularly the governors, they said, as chief security officers in our states, our primary duty is to safeguard lives and property. So they obviously reached out to the commission that they set up that facilitates their working together that look you guys should go away and come up with um, ideas that can quickly stem the issue of security so we went away truly we convened a one-day summit we called the security summit in 2019 <laughs> okay. and that then gave back to further meetings private meetings the outcome is what we all call Western Nigeria Security Network, or Amoteku. people who gladly call Amoteku. Amoteku. The idea came from Don Commission. Everything down to the uniform, the logo, the standard operating practices that they adopt. And what that has clearly shown is that when there is when there is an agreement or there is um, cooperation, there is, you can easily have traction. So the six states realized that the issue of security can no longer be politicized. Don't forget that at Don Commission we don't do we don't play politics. <laughs> we don't even do politics. It's technocrats. So ours is to bring things that will facilitate development. Now we what was the driving force behind having a security network? We realized suddenly that you can talk you can go abroad and try to talk to every investor in the world to come into your region. All the investor needs to do is um, pick up his or her phone and check where you're from and he has that 10 people kidnapped today, 14 people kidnapped mm -hmm. tomorrow. They will listen politely to you but and they, they will tell you, Mr. Day. Governor, thank you, we'll get back to you. They will never come. So the governors took the issue of security very, very seriously. And they gave us the go-ahead. We came up with the idea, took it back to the states, and thankfully, without politicizing, they all agreed that we must set up this security network. Now, They've been working very well in yeah. nearly all the states. The only state that does not have Amoteco. a designated, or they didn't call them Amoteco. And I would explain why. Which state is that? Lagos. Okay. Is Lagos, has, Lagos already has what they call the Neighborhood Watch. The, watch, okay. the Neighborhood Watch has about 7,000 people working there. And if you look at the work that they are doing, it's similar to Amoteco. what Amoteco will be doing in the other states. Some said, oh, Hey, they should go send them into the forest. Lagos does not have forests to this send any, some, uh, they, they forest, have forest to send anybody, to, to send anybody into. But the more serious note, they, but they subscribe. The the SOP standard operating practice yes. that Amoteco uses was copied nearly verbatim from the Lagos, Lagos structure. structure. So Lagos indeed is part of the whole thing. Yeah. So they might not be wearing their Moteco uniform, mm -hmm. but in principle, they're part of it. So now six states cooperated in that area. Now, co bringing it down till today, you might then argue that has Moteco stopped issue yeah. of security? And I will say this, not even the best police in the world hmm. can stop criminality. Yeah. Criminality will always be there. The job is to ensure that criminality does not prevail. Mm -hmm. In their limit, society, their limit their operations. So you find out that if you look at, if you've been reading the news, here and there in some of our states, Amoteku has been able to... To cop some essence. Now, you see, we, we live in um, a federal structure that is, a, that is defective, unfortunately, because the Amoteku are not allowed to carry sophisticated, sophisticated weapons. weapons. Um, again, is the morbid fear by the federal government that why should a sub-national, which is a state, be allowed to have a force that carries weapons? But unfortunately for the, for the federal, they are not able to single-handedly provide this security. 
And if you cannot provide security, people will look for alternatives. Absolutely. Do, uh, let's give an example. The bandits, or whatever you want to call them, I don't call them bandits, they are terrorists. Terrorists. Okay, but the they're government has not refused they are to. terrorizing the whole country. country. They carry sophisticated weapons. You are then telling the state, oh no, you can't carry guns. It's only the police. In a federal structure, policing are at different levels. Yeah. Nigeria is the only federal country that I know of that is trying to run a single police force <laughs> whereby a man sits in Abuja and tries to dictate what happens in Idi Ayure or what happens in Elisha or what happens in Odo Otin. It doesn't work. Effective security comes from the community. Okay. And that is the idea behind Amoteko, okay. that the people in the community will be the ones to own their security. You understand my point? Yeah, yeah. And so, the because, and so once the community owns security, you've already solved 50% of your problem. Yeah. Because the people will trust that security. They will know who is who in the community. Absolutely. In now, fact, let's quickly those who are working there, they will even understand them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's look at it now. Uh, it's a good structure, the Amoteko. Mm. The neighborhood uh, people in Lagos. But let's look at it. They, these guys are becoming more sophisticated. That they stay in the bushes. They do the guerrilla attack. They kidnap, they kill our people. Uh, Don, are you thinking about uh, having more of this uh, satellite area uh, view of this forest so that uh, when you now get their relocation, you send people to bring them or smoke them out of the forest? Good. I mean, that's a good question. Again, I'll go back to where I started from, that we run a defective uh, federal, federal system. Um some of our states, they've invested in what you call drones, mm -hmm. sophisticated drones. But to operate drones, you must get your license from the NSA, the yes, National the Security, Security Advisor. Advisor. And as far as I know, as of today, the 8th of August, 2022, <laughs> the NSA has refused to approve, to approve the use of drones again. Is the morbid fair if you are not doing what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and i say i won't do it yeah. you don't don't tie my hands behind my back For telling me to come, to and, come and eat me. no <laughs> don't do that so you say come and eat protect yourself while well, you tie my hands behind my back so what i'm trying to say is that the states understand the use of technology mm -hmm. and to a large extent uh Motekun today yeah. they're using technology within the limits of the law. But we are getting to a stage, and I'm saying this guardedly on air, that the boundaries will have to be pushed a bit further hmm. because the enemy we are dealing with yeah. is sophisticated, not just sophisticated, they are like a hydra-headed monster. The moment you cut it's off one off. head, all that hand sprouts up. So we are dealing with a group of people who are highly educated because, you see, at times... People think those terrorists are just one uh, rat tag. Uh, no, they are led by people. Some of have been to some of the best universities. We know that. And they have backup intelligence. Absolutely. Backup. They have intelligence. They have the weapons. So we must move away as a country if we are serious. And that's why I'm glad that our, our states here in the Southwest mm -hmm. are not taking it lightly. And they've, they've shown the lead. They've given the, that lead. Recently, Benway State yeah. started its own because it is, the way, it is the way to go. Cool. There can be no development without security. If you look at our economy, part of the reason the economy is struggling today is because there's been a massive divestment. Foreign investors have taken their money out of, the, of the, the economy, economy. Yeah. because they are worried. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So for us to go back so uh, when you say, oh, dollar, nine naira has crashed against the dollar, yeah. it's inevitable. If all the things that is giving you dollars, it's they've gone out. Gonna, now, let's quickly look at this. Uh, the, 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 oh, well, carnage. Yeah. More than 40 people were killed. Yeah. Subsequent ones, uh, today we heard that the Amoteko and soldiers are combing the forest in Obumo Shop. Yeah. Now, just eight people were mowed down. Eight, we are more down in Imo. The president is making a larger noise than what happened in a war. Once, second time, 
and also the third time. What mm. can you say? Looking at that situation, you see, it's um, you see, perception mm. is everything. Yeah, perception, particularly in today's world, okay. um, y y y y you're spot on when you come up with that type of um, example that mm. over forty-seven people were killed were killed in oh. a particular part of the country yeah. or war. And we didn't hear from the president. No, no, no. We no, heard no. from his spokesperson. Yes. From the I presidency. Mean, we did not we did not vote for the presidency. We yeah, voted, voted for, for a president. president. And as you rightly said, something similar on a slightly and no life is lower, don't get me wrong. I know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happened in uh Imo State, State and probably because of the people who are affected, mm. the first the Mr President got involved yeah. and Issued and made a statement. Is it that uh, the old people are not uh, <laughs> exactly are not so, important in this? And that's why perception is everything. Okay. Maybe maybe Mr. President didn't mean it that way, but the the way he has now intervened, then starts to give credence to those who think that is it actually true that in security matters is being handled with kid gloves at the federal level because maybe maybe we don't know maybe because certain type of people are pre, are pre predominantly involved again we are just um, we are guessing so <laughs> so what i'm just trying to say here yeah. is that you're right that as the father of all which the president is he must not only be seen but he must be heard one of the challenges this government, this presidency has had over the years, in the last seven years in particular, is that um, you've had a president who, you've had a president who, yes, reticent, quiet, but you are, you are now in a generation where you must be heard, you must speak, if you get my point. Mm -hmm. So, it, um, it's unfortunate that the president had to make comments on the issue in the emo state and ignore the well i won't use the word ignore the one in our oh, as i said it might just be perception he didn't mean it that way and uh, knowing him he was voted for by the whole country so I, i'm sure he wasn't selective in uh, in uh, choosing who to condole or who to condemn okay if we uh we need to leave that place because uh, uh, some people might feel we are a little bit playing uh, it mm. to the gallery because mm. uh, whether we like it or not, if you're watching us, this is critical matters and we must tell you, you should remember, you should know that uh, this Western Nigeria played prominent part in whatever uh, happened in the past. If it comes to industry, a lot of industries were cited here in Western Nigeria. But today, uh, gradually, gradually, uh, even other parts of the country are losing those great things that made them great. Among them is the issue of security. And I'll go over to this question. If the security is so porous or so bad that uh, no good investor will come to Nigeria, the Western Nigeria used to champion a lot of things. Uh, of all other regional businesses, uh, Odua still is still surviving to date. Uh, what is the trick or what is uh, uh, that thing that makes Udua to still be in existence compared to other regional economic blocks that we used to have, the eastern, the northern uh, uh, region uh, economic block? Why? Why is Udua still... Well, you see, we, 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 we must first of all appreciate the collective will of the states to make economic integration work. If you get my points, yeah. it's something called collective will. Um, when you must remember that Odua came out of the companies that um, Chief Obafe Baolo Akintola government started, yeah. all a lot of the companies Plywood, that they started, yeah, you are right. And when states were being, when the Western region was being broadcastized mm -hmm. by the federal government mm -hmm. in the 70s, it got to a stage that states were going their separate ways. And then there were military governments. Yes. The military governors of those day, or in those days came together and said, look, rather than just share these <laughs> companies, you take the one in your state, why don't we set up a vehicle 
that can run this company everything. on behalf of the states. Then there, it was just Oyo Ogunwanundo in those days. Mm -hmm. There was no Ikiti Anoshu, if you remember. Yes. And Lagos then was not even part of Odua. So those three governors, bless them, the likes of uh, Seidu Balogun, the likes of um, um, David Jemi Benwa in Oyo. Um, Adaishi. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, the Ondo governor then, I've forgotten his name now. They all agreed that it's a David equipment. They all came together and said, we will set up a vehicle. And that was what brought about, brought about Odua yeah. investment. Because people tend to forget that there was no Odua under our law. Yeah. It was Western Region, the company. Mm -hmm. So they set up that company. And over the years, despite the challenges, and yes, Odua had faced a lot of rocky challenges. That, but there was this collective will. Oh, there's this collective will among the people of the Western region that this is our heritage, that those who set up this company, if they had been so blasé or careless, mm -hmm. careless or this, things, <laughs> oh, this thing would have shot that. Wouldn't have been, there would have been nothing for us to even inherit. So that was what was the driving force. And for years, there were times that Odua was grossly underperforming. For yeah, Nobody's going to lie about that. For so many years. But they weathered the storm and with new management coming on board today no matter even if it's small they give dividends to the states who are the major shareholders it shows that the company is growing just last year they partnered with one or two other big companies and bought into the oil marginal fields it shows a company that is growing now there was a time in this mm. country where uh some element were trying to tell the Udua or the Western state to you know to 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 to, to dismantle the Udua. If you remember, in the eighties, we had it. Uh, there was strong pressure from the central government to dismantle Udua. Yeah. What was the trick that made them to still continue because uh, the other ones are dead? Yeah. As I said, you are right. There are there are issues then that um, they they wanted uh, the company to the, to fold up. Again, you see, it's this um, this um, unfounded fear <laughs> by the no, we, we're looking at it. Yeah, we, unfounded fear by the fear that uh, they're thinking that oh, yeah, this region is, must not be too powerful. powerful. You understand? But again, as I said, because there's collective will, yeah. uh, we speak the same language, we have the same culture, and with the something we call the la jobi. Yeah. That no, we are together. We are even from the same. To, even not to places like Ndoni. Don't that forget that they still have the Yoruba culture. Apart from the is the the Jews. Yeah, it's only the Yorubas. It's, it's the only race apart from the Jews that traces their history to one progenitor, yeah. Ududua. Ududua. Apart from the Jews, you understand my point. Yeah. So that thing binds them together. Forget that. Yes, we have our skirmishes here and there. But at the end of the day, they will still come to the same table. Oh, and yeah. that was what, exactly. <laughs> so that was what has kept the idea of Odua. In the nation state. And so when other states have had theirs balkanized or broken up, we see this as our common patrimony. Mm -hmm. That every year we must go back to say, we have delivering this for our people. And I can say safely, as I said, that one is actually happy today that the company is growing again, doing well. Today, they give, as I said, the states, no matter how, and we've even added Lagos now, yeah. which is the world, part of the work that we did at Don Commission. So we've added Lagos now to Odua because Lagos was not originally part of Odua. Yeah, yes. Again, it was, it was politics. It was a colony. There. Hey, it was politics. <laughs> I mean, uh, the Aulawa fought to the nail to try and bring uh, Lagos into part of Western yeah, region, but, it, it, but they never allowed Lagos, it. Is it at Lagos up to Britain? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, it yeah. It was just the yeah. colony. Oh, yeah. Uh, that the, oh, yeah. Uh, this, uh, oh, now, yeah. let's quickly look at uh, Western Nigeria in the nation state affairs in Nigeria. Now, a lot of things are happening, and it seems as if somebody was jokingly saying that uh, this other region are slowing down the pace. Uh, the Western region had the best civil service structure at the time, had almost the best things. Uh, can we say, can you say, or from your own angle, look at this uh, issue that uh, the Western Nigeria should have been ahead more than what it is today?
Well, I, I, I will give um, a different answer. I know that people have said, oh, we've been slowed down by oh, other... Right. I don't believe that. I, I actually believe it has been a collective failure of Nigeria itself. Collective failure. Collective failure of Nigeria. So it would, takes one person or one side uh, to it's say... It's yes, that's, that's neither here nor there, to okay. on, on, on the most serious notes. Mm -hmm. It, we are all Nigerians, okay. so uh, it will be. Is a, it a nationalistic zeal in you, or the reality on ground? Hey, I think it's the reality. I, I don't want to believe that one region has held the other region down. No, the constitution has enough lacuna for you to develop. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not one of those that would put every blame on the constitution. That is because of the constitution that have not been allowed to do X, Y, Z. No. There is enough lacuna in Nigeria's constitution that allows you to develop. So, if our development in the in the western part yeah. has been stunted, I will not quickly pin the blame on another region. No, it's only the lazy the lazy workman <laughs> that will be blaming his uh, tools. No, we yes we have probably in the last 30, 40 years, western Nigeria has suboptimized. That's not. A, debatable mm -hmm. but the good thing is that we are correcting that even within the space called nigeria we're trying to make every effort where we have lagged behind we are trying to regain our lost glory and in areas where we are tops we are saying that we don't have every right to remain top if we don't work at it mm -hmm. so there's a lot of work to be done there's a lot that is going on i mean i can tell you for free today that there's a lot of things that we are trying to put together that will give us a western nigeria rail as an example uh, okay. whereby the six states will be connected by rail it's gonna happen work is going on quietly the federal laws does not stop us from even if in the past that rail was only on the exclusive list. but with the new amendments that was passed mm -hmm by the need this parliament waiting for Mr. President to sign, they've taken rail to the concurrent list, which means that the six states can think together, work together. Lagos and Ugu at the moment, they are working together on rail. You understand? The the red line passes through Ugu State. state yeah. So they don't have a choice. If you're talking about how cooperation works together, recently Governor Shei Makinde and the governor in Osho um, His Excellency Governor Boyega, okay, uh, they signed an agreement to construct the road from Iworoj, Iworoj on the bridge okay. to Oshobu. The road will be constructed. Joint work between Osho and Noyo. Yes, they are not waiting for federal. So what I'm saying is that That's in areas, the Western region absolutely, is moving oh, no. ahead. So in spite and despite, <laughs> in spite we, and we will <laughs> make sure that the things that we can do Yep. to ensure that we remain where we are. So, I mean, we call ourselves the pace setter region. region yeah. Yeah, you are right, you're right. I mean, if you're talking of force, force yeah. in those days came from here. Yeah. So why are we where we are today? I'm, Most of uh, your industries have left. Yes. Blue chip industries mm. and now a lot mm. of... Then this agitation, let's come to this agitation because we started with security. Yeah will followed up with achievements in mm. the past. Mm. Uh, the, the, the topic is Western Nigeria and the nation state affairs, talking about Nigeria. A lot of agitations have been going on in this part of the world uh, because, like I asked you before, that they felt that uh, we've been slowed down because of other regions. Now, this agitation, how are you uh, trying uh, to walk through it or walk... <laughs> Circumvented. You mean, if I get you right, the Yoruba agitation yes. in the nation state called Nigeria. Okay, agitation to to stay on their own. On their own, break away. Not hmm. break away. Don't let us. Mm. No, it, well, it, it, it will be uh, security you see, people. Uh, no, <laughs> you, stay my, you, on see, their own. you see, my view is this. Yes. My view is this. Okay. It, it might not be the popular view. Okay. You see, it's it's easy to to think. That the grass will always be greener in on front the on the other side yeah. but not so you see nigeria is a great country if we decide to do the right things if we decide if and when we decide to do the right things okay. we are we are heard in the committee of nations sure. because of our size they still listen to us. The moment we decide to balkanize ourselves into tiny little states mm -hmm. 
the tendency is that you might become irrelevant. You might then say, oh no, there are tinier countries that are not irrelevant. All I'm then saying is that, have we exhausted every opportunity to make Nigeria work before we start clamoring that what will solve our problem is when we go away. But they refuse to accept restructuring because uh, if we go back to pre-63, mm. where each mm. region developed according to their own comparative yes. advantage, yes. if we go there, but some people are saying restructuring uh, is not the best. Mm. Let's continue with this wastage. It clearly, and only a fool will 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 say that we can continue this way. Surely we can't continue this way. That is why some of us are staunch advocates of a restructured Nigeria, which we believe will eventually have to happen. I, I, I but there are some people, some areas are saying no, mm -hmm. no restructuring. You see, I, I, let, 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 me, let me say this. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not a prophet or a clairvoyant, but I believe clearly that I suspect that within the next five years, we'll probably have a proper federal Nigeria. Structure. It, 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 because it is inevitable. That's why, so look, now Western region has its own security network. I told you they're working on their own rail at some point. Okay. Uh, they did it too when, uh, uh, I remember when the Canadians were uh, trying yeah, to Yeah, when, but it was stopped then because, because it because was still purely the exclusive preserve of the federal government. Uh, but but like the man that was in charge mm, told me, mm, uh, I've forgotten his name, mm, he was the, um, the chairman of Udua. Mm, they, they were ready, but he said uh, some people were demanding for money. Yeah, well, Which he, he told me he was the mm, chairman of mm, Udua. Yeah, he was you see, again, alumnus of Investor of Ibadan. Yeah, okay. again, again, those are the those, those are parts of the challenges that we face. Yeah. That breaking the way will not stop. <laughs> you, you, you understand my point? Yeah. Breaking the way is not going to stop corruption. Of if you think it will, it won't. Yeah. We have but this. Maybe country. we have more to share. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see, we have this large country called Nigeria, yeah, yeah. and. If we decide that we want to focus on the, look, okay, look at just yesterday, look at what our ladies did in the last 10 days in Marvelous. Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Marvelous. Nobody Expected. will tell you where Ese Brume is from or whether Tobia Musho is Muslim or Christian or you understand my point or Ade Koroye that won in wrestling. The people saw them as Nigerians. Yeah. We're all happy. You understand my point? Yeah. So, what we need to do, rather than just hide under, oh, we are going our own way, this is not working again. I would say that if there are 100 things that need to be explored before breaking it, I'm, I'm not saying they can't go away, but I'm saying that there are still 98 that is untouched okay. before we can get to that stage. And You see, break, we've seen countries break away and it never worked out. But in Europe, we've seen countries break away and today, uh, the Czechoslovakia, mm. Czechs and everything, yeah. Yugoslavia, uh, we've seen... Go, you see, the, the, that exactly... You know, some some mm. were a little bit trouble, uh, turbulent in terms of... But there were some other You see, the, the Czech example, Czechoslovakia example, yeah. it, 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 it's not applicable to us. And I will say this. Why? Over there, you have the Czechs, you have the Slovaks. Slovak. They're not the same people anyway. Okay. Okay. No, let, no. Let, let me let, this is where I'm going. <laughs> so they came together, sat at a table, and said, You know, we are forced together. Mm. Yes, you might say Nigeria is the same as well. Let's go our separate ways. Now, it's also easy yes. for the likes of Czech and Slovak to go to their separate ways because the level of development they had attained even before going the separate okay. ways. Nigeria, in the next 50 years, will not get there. If we really are. <laughs> so, all I'm just saying is that <coughs> I'm not condemning. There are issues that drove those who are clamoring to go away. Mm -hmm. There are issues that have driven them to that point, India, which have not Bangladesh been solved. You understand? But we are saying that those issues can still be accommodated. And we have... A you see, it's because we've agreed that... Uh, we've made Abuja yeah. too strong. So, and is that military please, mentality? I, please, let me take this. Hello? Hello, please, can you reduce the volume of your TV set? Please, uh, the number on the, uh, on the screen now is 90 
707-207-2080. You can call us. We're talking about Western Nigeria in the nation state affairs. Affairs in terms of Nigeria. I have with me on set this evening the Director General of uh, Development Agenda for Western Nigeria. And this group, they've been doing a yeoman's job. Though they're not into politics, but they're a bunch of technocrats. Where the team leader is the man, my guest this evening. So please call, reduce the volume of your TV set so that uh, people will hear you and you contribute to this discussion. Uh, I have another caller. Good evening. Your name? Hello. Hello. Your name and where are you calling from? My name is John. I'm calling from Akwa State. Oh, Mr. John. Okay. Your contribution. Okay, my contribution, Nigeria does not need restructuring. Okay. At all. <clears throat> I have never seen anything that goes wrong. It's all about people. It's just like you have a family, you cannot help your family well. It's just like you have a new government, you cannot do well. Or you are, you are, you are a village chairman or, or chief in the village, you can't do. So are you telling me that president is the one that would come and do it, rule it? No. What you were talking about, as a citizen in this country, is not restored. You may restructure the bad, bad head. Those who don't want to see the poor. Mm -hmm. So what, what do we do? To do? Yeah, thank you. What do we do is the bad heads that carry our money out of this country, those are the people that they need to retire them. <laughs> okay. They need to retire them. Uh, he has said uh, we need to retire them. You see, retire you see, I'm glad he even mentioned that. Yeah. There's something we are trying to put together at the moment, I've been working on, okay. in the Southwest, which is what we call the ethical reorientation, hmm. whereby we're going to focus on... Is it like ethical revolution? No, we're going to focus... We want to focus on pupils in primary four, senior primary school yeah. to six, and, and students in JS1 to three. Civic. We're going to, exactly, it's like the old Civic. civic. So it, we, there's the book that is going to be ready soon, coming out of our office. We call it the Omoluabi book, hmm. where it will be used by teachers to inculcate new values. It's going to be an ethical and social orientation, whereby you will tell us that young man, don't throw litter on the road, as an example. Hmm. As simple as that, that when you're called for a meeting, and they say it's 3 p.m., turn off before 3. Not Nigerian time. No, exactly. <laughs> you see, the moment you can capture that age group... Build uh, the future. You are building the future. Look, we've had democracy since 1999, which is 20, 23 years now. Yeah. The child who was born in 1999 yeah. and he has not seen any good value has today turned into a bandit. Hmm. As an example, that child who was probably five years old then, he's now 28. He's now a Yahoo boy because he, he rose up and he grew up in a society that relegated good values. You understand my point? For you, you might be thinking, oh, 23 years is so, sh is so short. It, but it has gone by. Yes. It, uh, someone said that a 10-year-old man in 1999, started, a 10-year-old man in 1999, he's 33 years old now. What are the values that that person is holding? When we were growing up in the 80s and late 70s here in this mm -hmm. city, we knew what values were. You understand? We had jingles on radio that would tell you, don't take bribe, don't speed in the rain. There were things that stuck in our brains. Don't, don't so, in the, the other day, they, and to show how devalued we are, the other day we did a jingle in my office trying to campaign against ritual killing. We took it around several radio stations and TV. They told me to come and pay money. Uh, it's commercial. And I said, what am I selling? But we will not get frustrated mm -hmm. because we believe that no matter the country you build, infrastructure-wise, if you don't train the inhabitants, the youth, the they will destroy the infrastructure. Like Chief Look at what happened during answers. Mm -hmm. A group of people went to 100 brand new buses. What did they do? Set it on, Set fire. It on fire. It is values. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Let's tell the people watching us right now. Uh, Western Nigeria used to be the center of uh, development in this country. 
uh, Western Nigeria in the nation's state uh, affairs is something that uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, because uh, when it comes to the Yoruba ethnic group in the Nigerian nation, uh, they seem to be a little bit uh, far ahead in terms of development, in terms of uh, culture, civility, and in terms of progress. Uh, some people believe that uh, these virtues have been slowed down as a result of uh, what some people call mixed multitude, mixing with other people. The Don boss is telling me, no, we are trying to start a new team using those little children to grow a better future for this country. But uh, let's quickly look at the issue of, I remember going through Ikoyi to Ijebugbo, there used to be a lot of great uh, farm settlement in those days. If you go to Fashola, Lala, Chief Abafe Meaulo did a lot of things in terms of agricultural development that nose dive into industries. They were producing a lot of things. If you are watching us, you can be part of this program. 090-707-20980. It's critical matters. Uh, uh, DG, uh, let's quickly look at uh, the issue of those places, the farm settlement. I know that the governor for yesterday just opened uh, a very big factory that will be doing processing cassava, and it took some people earlier in the year to learn certain things uh, in the middle belt. Talking about it, see, are we going to have a better future in terms of uh, a people that can feed themselves? Let's take this call. Hello, good evening. Your, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Chukwemeka calling from Enugu. Chukwemeka calling from Enugu. Okay, your point. Western Nigeria. Um, I think our program really is not there. You know, mm -hmm. development has been, you know, across all the regions of the But the children that we later had were nearly stressed no, all the time that came up for the living in Nigeria, when they climbed up, or the, 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 the different how you just all about that rural region, then by subduing other region to the limit of their own region. You get it now. So okay. These are the children that we have had in the rest of time. We have to abolish politicians, leaders, most of the prisons, who only consider their own region. I mean, Creating on the development to other regions. For example, the Southeast region, by now, I think she has been a very large, a very strong economy region. But as you can see, they are going back because nothing was, you know, that we were not giving the, the, the avenue to, to move on. Okay. I use them initially, economically. Okay. Thank you very and much, Kikameka. Uh, uh, now, uh, the question I asked... On agriculture. You see, agriculture. Let, let, me, let me quickly answer this. Yeah. That, you see, the way the world is today, it is no longer the business of government mm. to be the one setting up our Greek farms or this and that. Theirs is to create... Enabling that's what we call the enabling environment. And I'm glad you mentioned the factory, the Sabitzan factory that was opened in Ado on mm. Thursday. I was there physically as mm -hmm. well. Those are some of the success stories that the states will start pointing to, mm -hmm. that they created an avenue, that environment, for that business to exist. You see, for a Greek to thrive, you need a lot of private sector funds. And what, I mean, I'll use our region here, what our states are doing is attract that private investor. Recently, in the last two years, a big dairy farm was resuscitated in the Kitty State. Ekiti State went into partnership with Promacido. Promacido mm -hmm. it's one yeah. of the famous dairy companies. Yeah. Today, that place is producing milk. Recently, Undo State went into partnership with a private company. They are producing palm oil seedlings. Soon, Undo State will be a palm oil belt. Ogun State, as an example, what they are also doing is that if a Mr. Olisa approaches Ogun State today, that you need acres to do farming, once they can verify that you are ready for this farming, they will lease you the land. So a lot of people are also moving towards the state, state to get the land. 
Look at what Lagos State did. They've invested in a rice meal. They know that Lagos consumes a lot of rice, as an example. <laughs> so they invested in the 32-ton rice meal at Imota in the Korodu. It was set up by Lagos. They've now gone into partnership with private sector who are going to run that rice mill successfully. They will get their party from all over Nigeria. And I can safely say that a lot of our farmers in Southwest are gearing up to be part of the suppliers there. Right so now. the story of agriculture is changing. Soon you will see proper huge cattle ranches springing up here in Southwest Nigeria. Okay. Because, again, we need to move away from that archaic, moribund, anachronistic idea of transporting, transporting cows uh, on the road ro for days and weeks. Nobody does that anymore. So those who are still encapsulated into that time warped method, maybe we'll just leave them to their own uh, devices and do your own cattle ranching, if you get my point. Yeah. So the story of agriculture here is changing gradually. The biggest challenge we face in Western Nigeria is accessibility to land. You might think there's land everywhere. No, a lot of those land, a lot of the land are family land. I know of a man that we went to speak with a few years ago, sitting on fifteen thousand hectares mm -hmm. of land, and this we wanted to lease, not my commission. We took some investors there, and the man refused to lease the land, sitting on it. All I'm just saying is that it needs quick those are some of the fix. bottlenecks. <laughs> but our like states, and look at what or your government did on. Farm settlements. Okay. Governor Shui Makinde is making every effort to try and resuscitate with the help of private sector. You understand my point? Mm. And I keep mentioning private sector because governments cannot do everything. Some have come to me and say, well, during our law, this happened, that happened. I said, well, that was fine then. The population then and the population now. It's not going to work. It's like when we talk of free education. Some will say, oh, why, is, why don't we have free education today? I say, well, the population that Aulawa dealt with then is a far cry from what we have okay. today. Now we need to go because yeah. uh, time is no more than said. But look at the uh, state of California in America. Yes. The sixth largest economy in the world. In the world. Yeah. Now let's look at our state. Uh, we talk about energy. It's mm. very important in yeah. any development. Yeah. Energy prices are going up. All over the world. All over, even here was, because in terms of, if you say all over the world, there's still some stability in the system to ameliorate the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, in the nearest future, in the Western Nigeria, from your team, would there be something like an alternative source of energy yes. to run the industries or bring back those industries that have uh, left because of high cost of energy and production costs? The, the states, again, the southwest, are moving towards that captive power, generating their own little power and then sending it out. Look, or your state is doing something similar, even in Ibadan, okay. where they're going to power. I'm just using as an example power the secretariat and a few offices and um, hospitals around that area. Lagos State is investing a lot in private power, whereby independent power, whereby they will be the ones companies will be buying directly from okay. them. That is the way to go. You see. We again, it's because of our federal structure or yeah. the way we, the way we've the been system. set up in the past. Right? It has to be one. But luckily, there's now been so many game-changing legislations yes. that have been passed, so that states can even generate, distribute their power. And Let me show I can you. tell you this: yeah. that the six states here yeah. will be working with the private sector to have their own power-generating companies. Let too. me shake you from your activities collating data, mm. moving. Mm. Do you think people uh, uh, in the Western Nigeria in the ne f nearest future will still be part of the nation state Nigeria? W without a doubt. You see, whatever, you see, it is to the glory of Nigeria if Western Nigeria continues to develop a successful Western Nigeria. Do you is think it, is a Western Nigeria will Nigeria? not move away because uh, when they are being choked, I, I I don't envisage that in the nearest future. Happens, I pray we don't get there. Let me say let me say <laughs> let me say it again. I pray we don't get okay. there. Where a situation where we want to balkanize ourselves and no, go we away. We want to go away. It's not balkanizing. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> still the same thing. It, you see, it's it, it's not um, it, it it's not the best solution. But it's it, not the it, best can solution. Can it be an alternative to? 
there will always be agitation that's oh it is better we go our own way but I do, i'm talking that's personally right, yeah. i don't subscribe but to that for now with I'm th no, 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 yes i still think that there's still enough logs that we have not put into the fire to see whether the fire of nigeria can burn okay, properly, properly. Once we exhaust those logs and we think that this thing is not burning, you can then start thinking of alternatives. But I still think, and I'm, I'm very firm about this, that you cannot discountenance the reasons those who are agitating to break away. They have their genuine fears. Okay. You can blame them. They've seen things not work over the years. So that's why they came up with, the, oh, you know what, let's just go a separate way. But all I'm just saying, and there are advocates like me who believe that Nigeria is a fantastic country, we only need to sit down properly and let everybody know that it is in their own collective enlightened self-interest that if we restructure and we are able to do things semi-independently in our own little regions, Things will work better for us. As you said, in the in the, 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 the colonial masters that gave us Nigeria, they knew our peculiarities. That was when that was why they gave us the parliamentary system. You understand? Okay. So yeah. we need to go. I must say special thanks to my guest. Uh, he is the director general of uh, development agenda for Western Nigeria. We'll be talking about Western Nigeria and the nation state uh, affairs. Is uh, Mr. Leye uh, Sheye Oyeleye. Uh, he's been my guest and we've been talking about uh, the Western Nigeria and he's the head of the think tank, not politics, but those technocrat strategies that are marshalling points for us to move forward. I remain yours sincerely, Lawrence Udugu Olisa, and I've been working with a very fantastic uh, people uh, behind the cameras talking about talk by Tunji and a host of others that has made it possible. It's Impact Africa Television Broadcasting from Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria. Please uh, thank you for those who called in. And uh, next week again, we'll be here with another critical matter. It concerns our region. About your region, we'll come to your region. Bye for now and stay blessed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.